Welcome back to our NIA protocol smart contract series. In our previous videos, we learned about data types and functions. Today, we're exploring how to initialize our smart contracts with default values and why we need it. First, why do we need to initialize a contract? Smart contract stores data. When you first deploy a contract to near, it's completely empty, no data exists yet. If someone tries to use your contract right after deployment and it tries to read data that doesn't exist, the contract will break or crash. That's why contracts always need to be initialized. They need some starting values stored in the ZAM before people can use them safely. So one way to initialize a contract is by giving it default values. Default values are just starting numbers or settings that get automatically set when your contract is deployed. Let's do it. Simple default for contract here we write our function default self one more time self and let's do a counter will be equal zero Input default is special feature in Rust that lets you set up default starting values for the contract's data. Think of it like setting up a new phone. It comes with basic syntax already configured. When you deploy a smart contract to near, it needs to know what values to start with. Should the counter start on 0 or 1, we did it on 0, default answers these questions. There are two main ways to initialize your smart contract when it's deployed to near. First is default that we already use it. And another one is custom initialization. Let's write it. It should locate inside of our contract. So write first macro init. Create a function to initialize new counter user32. self one more time self and counter with the init function you can let people set specific values when they deploy the contract this method is more flexible because you can accept parameters and set dynamic values like the current timestamp or the person who deployed the contract as the owner contracts need to be initialized so if you go with init you will have to call it at least one and also remember from the previous series that data type should be the same. So our counter that we set U32 should be the same as here U32. So which initialization method should you choose? Use default when your contract has simple fixed starting values. It don't need any input from the person deploying the contract. Use initialization in need this one. When you need to set the owner to however deploy the contract, you want to accept parameters during deployment, you need dynamic values like the current timestamp, etc. For the most real contracts, you will need to use init because it's more flexible and lets you set the owner properly. But default is perfect for learning and simple contracts. That's how we initialize near smart contracts. We learned that we can set starting values for your contract or create initialization functions that needs to be called after the contract is deployed to initialize it. In the next video, we'll explore ownership in the Rust in the smart contract. Subscribe for more new tutorials and drop your questions in the comments. See you next time.